Thank you, Wesley. Jamming, jamming to some holiday tunes. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. It's 12 p.m. on the East Coast, at least. Welcome to Triumph Life Center's virtual gathering. Bienvenidos, buenos días, buenas tardes. <laughs> um, it's December 27th. Woohoo! We're almost there. We're almost there. I believe this is our last meeting before the new year, right? I think so. Next time we meet, we will be January. <sighs> okay, I'll start with a quote. Take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase, just the first step. That's by Martin Luther King Jr. That's pretty relevant since we're ending this year and we're not really sure how everything will go from here. I guess we never do, but this year in particular was really intense for the entire world. So it's kind of exciting to have a feeling that we can somewhat start fresh. Um, today's theme is reflections from 2020, words to live by in the new year. And we have a special guest, Miss Kim B. Miller. She's here with us today and we're really excited to have Miss Haiku Queen back. <laughs> it's going to be a treat for us. Thank you. I'll just review our outline. The same, the usual. We'll do some breathing. We'll do our sacred readings, opening prayer. Um, staff member Travis Mills is going to share a song with us. Um, yeah, and then we'll get going into the conversation and hear some poetry and just spend some beautiful time together. The Eternal One said, Don't revel only in the past or spend all your time recounting the victories of days gone by. Watch closely. I'm preparing something new. It's happening now, even as I speak, and you're about to see it. I'm preparing a way through the desert. Waters will flow where there had been none. And that is from the Message Bible. So let's take some time and relax our bodies, get in touch with our body, our heart, our soul and set some intentions for today's gathering. Take a nice deep breath. In through your nose. And out through your mouth. And I invite you to do two more of those while I strike this bowl. In through your nose. And out through your mouth. In through your nose, and out through your mouth. Notice how your body might have changed. Any sensations that might have changed. Any tension that might have been released when you took those breaths. I invite you to continue breathing like that. In through your nose, and out through your mouth. Do a quick body scan. Check in with yourself. Are there any points of pressure or tension or pain? Any emotions like sorrow, fear, anger, contentness? Acknowledge those feelings and let them be. And let your breath ground you. And as we approach the end of the year, you can think about how we've walked down this road together. We've experienced a universal shift in consciousness. I believe so. And as we've walked down that path, we've seen a lot of horror and suffering. And we've felt a lot of pain and fear and anger and frustration.
but we must keep walking forward. We must keep taking steps. We must keep taking breaths. And realize that if we turn back, we're not really going to grow from there. That beautiful rose bush, bush that you may have passed on the way here, by the time you go back to it, it's wilted up and it's dying and it's not the same that you thought it was when you first saw its blooms. But that's natural. Because all life begins and all life progresses and all life ends as it should, as we will too. And so while we're here, the least that we can do is support life, create life, encourage life, and enjoy our life. Keep taking steps forward. Keep taking breaths. If you need a minute to shake it out, I encourage you to do so. It feels good. <laughs> Throughout this session, feel free to bring your attention back to your breath. Listen to your body. Together we've strengthened ourselves in an expression of unity, love, and purpose to better relate to ourselves, to others, and the environment around us. Ashe, thank you. Ashe. So again, welcome everybody. It's December 27th, the last Sunday of 2020 that we are together. Um, I'm Brenda, I'm your host. As usual, we have on the call right now, I'll just give some shout outs. We have Leslie, our resident musician who started us off. Thank you. I see Nadia's here. Hi. I see Travis Mills. Good morning, Travis. Our special guest, Miss Kimby Miller. Welcome, welcome. Hi. <laughs> we have senior Bishop Milton Brittle and Sandra Addison Brittle. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We love you. you say good morning. Good morning. <laughs> We were really happy to have Kim, I think a few months ago at this point, and yeah. it, was a, it was a really great time. So we're happy to have you back. We're excited to see where today goes, what thoughts and beautiful words come up for us. Um, for the last few months, we've been discussing reimagining community and our questions were focused on what kind of world do you want to live in? And what does it take to create that world? And today, as we end this year, our focus is reflections from 2020, words to live by in the new year, 2021. Also, hello to everyone watching on Facebook. If you'd like to join us, you're welcome to. You're welcome to share this page on your page. You're welcome to comment, and we will address them as we go on. Um, Enjoy yourselves. <laughs> As always, the Christ in me celebrates the Christ in you, and together we'll make our world brand new. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Triumph 7 Life Affirming Principles, the Basis of Union. We affirm that life is in the breath, and breath is life. Therefore, we join together to promote our shared humanity and inseparable breath. 
We affirm that we are born whole, complete as perfect manifestations of the universal mind, Christ. We affirm our physical bodies differ and as such may present different challenges, limitations, or privileges that everyone may not share in. Therefore, we join together to share our strengths and support one another where there may be weaknesses so that all we so that all so that we all may enjoy the fullness of life. We affirm that our agreement is to pursue peace, walk in truth, uphold justice, tempered with mercy. We affirm that we are like branches on a tree. Although we may grow in different directions, we share a common root and as such we pledge to respect each person's path even as it may differ from one's own we agree to walk in agreement that it is all right to disagree and we protect and safeguard this right in so much as the state of disagreement upholds an affirmation of life we affirm that community building is a process of communal shared principles shared resources as well as equitable access to resources Therefore, we commit to being agents of an open culture that welcomes everyone to participate in the life of the community with the provision that we also hold each other accountable for acts that do not support the life-affirming principles of our awareness, while equally looking for and enacting a commitment to forgive and restore in the spirit of humility and love. Lastly, we affirm the earth and all that dwell Therein are manifestations held within the universal mind, Christ, and humanity's role is to be faithful stewards of this earth by demonstrating respect and dignity for all beings, the sacredness of Mother Earth, and our commitment to caring for her as we care for ourselves. Thank you. I'll share our opening prayer, and I'll pass it over to Travis after. Unity of all, Hanto Yo, which means clear the way in the Lakota. Let us pray, God of surprises, you call us from the narrowness of our traditions to new ways of being church, from the captivities of our culture to creative witness for justice, from the smallness of our horizons to the bigness of your vision. Clear the way in us, your people, that we might call others to freedom and renewed faith. Clear the way in us, your people, that we might call others to wholeness and integrity. Great Spirit, you call us from fear to faithfulness, from clutter to clarity, from a desire to control to deeper trust, from the refusal to love to a readiness to risk. Clear the way in us, your people, that we might all know the beauty and power and danger of the gospel. Ashe. Ashe. As Travis is coming, I just wanted to um, uh, greet everyone and say uh, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, just welcome everyone. And we're so excited that Travis, who is um, our resident philosopher, poet, spoken word uh, smith, uh, shared this week that he had written a song that he wanted to share with us. So we're just all excited about, I am about just hearing this from Travis, because whatever he brings, it's always so uplifting. So just join me in welcoming Travis with an original song. The song called Help. I see you suffering. I know that pain bubbling. I look in your eye. I know you want to cry. You beautiful. You got me wondering. You got me stuttering. I want to help you. 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 I know you sick and depressed. The devil made a mess. Don't worry. God sent his best. You came here. And for that, I'm going to give you a miracle. I'm not God. I'm just a messenger. He told me, Travis, my people hurting. This is critical. So every word I say will be biblical. I want to help you. 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 You know, you made mistakes. But ain't I, you still great. Compassion, fashion. You're beautiful. 
You can only save yourself, but I want to help you. 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 That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. Can I ask, was there anything in particular that inspired that piece? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Woo! I guess my job at Charlie. Um, will, will you mind if I do one more? Go ahead, Travis. I'm always inspired by you. Go ahead. This, this song called Self Destruction. Self destruction, self destruction, self destruction. Please no interruption. God gave me, God gave me to, God sent me to do construction. He told me follow his instruction. Self destruction, self destruction, self destruction. Please no interruption. God sent me to do construction. He told me follow his instruction. God in human form. Tried and gave me the uniform. I'm red. I'm a black unicorn. Born to win, and you're gonna win. Turn your sins into wins. I hope you gonna. I'm gonna blow you up like a balloon. I came here to heal your wounds. No more neglect. I came here to serve and protect. I'm gonna say this again. God sent his best. Self destruction. Self destruction. Self destruction. Please no interruption. God sent me to do construction. He told me follow his instruction. Self destruction. Self destruction. Please no interruption. God sent me to do construction. He told me follow his instruction. When he came. What? That's it. Woo! God sent me to do construction. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. That was really special. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's your namesake. We're singing Milton. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. Wow. I'm just gonna get this going again. <laughs> that was cool. That was really cool. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'll share a little bit about Triumph Life Center. We opened on October 19th of last year under the umbrella of Triumph the Church of the New Age International, which was founded in 1904. We seek to further the work of founder Bishop Elias Dempsey Smith, who had a vision of a new world system that he fully believed was attainable through the shared practice of spiritual principles that would lead to our collective awakening and higher expression of the divine. Triumph Life Center's vision is of an interdependent community formed from the tapestry of our individual and collective experiences of the divine that fosters both an embodied spirituality and epistemology as pathways to establishing a new world where all may share in the fullness of life. Our mission is to promote the creation of new cultural practices and social and economic systems that are egalitarian, affirms our shared humanity, and holds sacred the earth and all life forms, to create a safe and sacred space where marginalized individuals and communities who may not have equal access to opportunities can connect up to expand both their spiritual and intellectual life and gain access to opportunities for personal growth through shared resources and support for developing spiritual gifts and intellectual pursuits, to honor the Sabbath as a time for individual and collective spiritual, physical, emotional, and mental well-being through shared music, spoken word, sacred readings, and a communal meal. Our goal is to be a hub for conversations envisioning a new world order creative arts expressions, emerging social entrepreneurships, promoting community-owned sustainable food systems for access to healthy living, expanding reverence and care for the earth and all life forms, forming alliances and building bridges across community barriers that mutually affirm our shared humanity, people of all faiths, cultures, ethnicities, races, genders, orientations, abilities, and personal challenges, to be in community with each other on one accord. That's us. <laughs> um, so we'll do our sacred readings and I'll pass to Wesley. Okay. 
So this tune is called Maria Maria by Milton Nascimento e Fernando Branch. Hope, to pray when faith is lost, to stand with no legs, to see someone beg for help, the effect of being lost, to have a mouth with no words, to be given a heart with no blood, to be given ears to hear lies, to continue there to no ending, to, to only see a hand in quicksand. It's scary, it's a scary world where so many people pretend. To continue and then collapse, face full of sweat, no sweat, from, no breath from the body, Bright white light, bright white cloud got together. A beam of light hit his body. I watch your journey, my son. Were you lost? I will give you bad time 20, said God. His body began to regenerate. What was lost is now found. What was quiet now has sound, said God. The light went back up to the sky. Cloud parted ways. He so he picked himself up and cried. It's about that time. No more resolution. You made a promise you love yourself. No more trying. Now you're doing. Showing and improving. Living to glow. Loving to grow. Are you ready? Get ready. The way is over. Your time is here. Give God your fear and give God your hand. God give, give God your worries and God will give you abundance. Give God your heart and God will give you paradise. Are you ready? It's about that time. To enter heaven, you must love yourself. Are you ready? To enter heaven, you must practice compassion. Are you ready? To enter heaven, you must save the youth. Are you ready? To enter heaven, you must have a key. I want you to have one. I went to journey. It wasn't a lockdown. You needed time to relief. You needed time for recovery. You needed time for reflection. He made you stay in the house for our protection. A new day and night are coming and they are beautiful. So beautiful you forget the past and embrace the future. Welcome home. We've been watching for a long time to endure, and to endure so much and still have a pure heart. You can't rewind time, but we can give you a fresh start. What you've been through become beautiful art. Welcome home. This is the place your scars become testimonies. Your rebirth will be a ceremony. Welcome home. This is where you belong. Welcome to Triumph Church. Okay, so um, 
as we've been doing all month, this is December, the last month of the year, we have been sharing um, some featured moments from our time together um, in person at 1037 East 92nd Street. So I have two short clips, just about a minute each from our last Sunday uh, that we were in person in Brooklyn. And uh, the first one is Wes and Alex Hamburger. Some of you may recall, she's the uh, flute player. She's been on with us a few times here in the virtual space, but she was with us each Sunday um, when we were in person playing with uh, Wes. And so they are opening in the beginning of service, I think this is, or maybe at the end, I'm not sure, but it was part of our March the 8th service. And I also have another short clip because that day we featured Alfonso Horn, who um, shared pieces from his uh, original play on the African princess. So we're going to watch the clip with Alex and um, Wes first, and they're playing up above my head. Now, just a, a, a disclaimer, I'm filming this and you can hear my, my horrible voice in the background. So just excuse that, but it was so much fun. So go ahead. You're good. We love your voice. so good oh well, <laughs> i just love that i just love that wow this is, uh, 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 alfonso horn and we'll continue to pray for him uh, as he's uh, recovering and hopefully we'll be able to bring him back bring him on in uh, one of our virtual spaces sometime in 2021 those two pieces as we just strolled down memory lane um, in 2020 as we're ushering in 2021. I miss it there. Yes. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Thank you for sharing that, Sandra. You're welcome. All right. So it's pretty much exactly 1230. Perfect. We have about 30 minutes. Um, and we have our beautiful guest, Miss Kim B. Miller. Welcome, welcome. I can't see your, uh, okay, now I see you. <laughs> I'm like, it's hard with everything happening at once. Um, we're very excited to have you back. Um, Kim Miller is a facilitator, a motivational speaker, a spoken word poet. And when I first met her, I was introduced to her as the haiku queen. <laughs> She's a native New Yorker. 
Um, she's an empowering motivational speaker that touches your heart, mind, and soul. This award-winning spoken word poet loves writing and performing. Her poetry is her heart expressed in words, opinionated, blunt, thought-provoking, and real. She's an author with several published books. She recently co-authored a book called The Ultimate Guide to Self-Healing, Volume 2. She sells her poetry in unique frames and makes 3D designs that she calls 3D poetic canvas art. And her online store has her poetry, affirmations, Kim-isms, on posters, shirts, mugs, canvas, and more. And we'll be sharing her website in this Zoom call on our social media pages. Um, but it's www.kimbmiller.com if you're interested in taking a look right now. She believes thinking is her oxygen and words are her blood. And she believes words have power, so use them wisely. I agree. <laughs> um, welcome. Thank you. Hi. How are you feeling? How's it going? How's it been since we last saw you? I've been good. I got no complaints. So um, news is I was made Poet Laureate, Crown Poet Laureate for Prince William County, Virginia. And I'm the first African-American Poet Laureate for Prince William County. Congratulations. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. OK. So um, take us away, Kim. All right. All right. So. <clears throat> I just recently wrote another book and that's what I'll be talking through today. And the first poem I'm gonna go through in this book is actually a letter. And this is the first one. I always start a little, on a little heavier note and then make it a little lighter. And I wanted to start with this one and we'll talk about why. And I love to hear y'all uh, opinions on it. And um, it's called Mom Gone Too Soon. Mm. And I wrote this for people whose mother is no longer here, but she is here, if that makes sense. She's no longer here in the flesh, but she's still here. And you can use this poem, not just for moms, but for any loved one that is gone. But let me get into the poem. <clears throat> I am love. The first lips that touch your face were mine. I watched you breathe. I thought you knew I had to go. I was only meant to be a temporary guardian of your heart. I can't stay. You must walk without me. Focus on our love. Pain can't erase what we have. Don't let my death kill you. Mm. I love seeing you prosper. You make me so proud. Death is not a sentence. It's a word. Remember the love, fun, dreams we made together? You can still do them. I'll be lucky. Make sure you keep your promises. Live for me. Live for you. Make Mother's Day Purpose Day. Don't you use me to be stagnant. I birthed a conqueror. I saw it in your eyes. You're not wrong for missing me. Just don't miss your own life too. I'm at peace. I want you to find a peace of peace too. I always love you, mom. Ooh. And that one is, um, I usually put that one out about Mother's Day. And I said, well, I need to put that one in a book because more people need to hear it because, and every person who's read it, whose mother has died has reached back to me, has really, you know, touched the heart, what they've said. And I say that here today because I don't know who it is, but I had to read that for somebody. I don't know if you're online, on Facebook, listening, and you are beating yourself up over what you could have if, if is the biggest curse word on this planet. Forget what you've been told. If is the biggest curse word on this planet. If I had, if only I had, if, no, you can't change what you didn't do, but you can start living for today. You didn't 
do something you want to do, change it now. That's how you show them that you're living in in purpose and strength and living who you want to supposed to be. But if you're just going, if in mourning or for mourning, of course you're going to mourn. I'm not saying you shouldn't be mourning. Please don't hear me incorrectly. Mourn, cry, get angry. That's all part of the mourning process. But don't live there. Don't stay there. Show them who you are. Live your life the best way you can. That's how you honor them. Not by staying sad. You honor them by being all you can be. So I wanted to see if y'all wanted to say anything before I get on. That was perfect for this time, Kim. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, so such rich words, moving, thoughtful. And I like how you said you talked in the poem about it's okay to miss me but don't miss your life. I thought that was so profound in saying that. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Alrighty. Oh, thank you. I'm reading the comments. Thank you. So if you're hurting, totally understandable. Staying stagnant, thinking that's your way of mourning, I'm going to challenge you to mourn a different way. Mourn in the grace of the person who you're, if that person was a fighter, they're looking down and they wanna see you fight. If that person was one who always had words, they don't wanna see you down here saying, I'm not gonna be nothing because they're not here. Mm -mm. Be all you can be, whatever that is, just keep striving to go forward. We are all standing on our ancestors' back, every single one of us. And we have got to move forward in the strength. They didn't come this far for us to stop. They absolutely did not. So I don't care if you're five, 50, or 70. If you're here, you're not done. There's still work to be done. Whatever that work is, is up to you. But there's young people thinking that they're done. So don't think if you have a certain age, you're thinking, well, this, this she's only talking. I'm talking to everyone because everyone has painted themselves into that box of done a box of limits, a box of I can. And I'm telling you, you can if you choose to. I think it was Wayne Gretzky who said, you miss every shot that you didn't take. Of course you didn't make it in the game. You never took a shot. But at least if you take a shot, you have a chance. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you in the comments. The name of the book is My Poetry is the Beauty You Overlook, and here's the cover. And um, this one has 10 poems, 10 chemisms. I'll go over what a chemism is myself. And 100 haiku, which I'll be doing soon. So, haiku. Oh, let me explain what a haiku is. So, a haiku is a really short poem, only three lines five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables, 17 syllables, not words, unless they're all one syllable. To make a point, started in Japan only on nature and flowers. Other countries switched it up. It can still be 575, but written differently. It's a long explanation, but that's, that's the short. Haiku. You cannot divide yourself into fractions to make someone else whole. Can't do it. Can't. Haiku. Your son spends more time with Fortnite than he does with you. Toys don't raise kings. I am not anti-gaming, for those of you wondering. I like games like everybody else. I play games. I'm just saying, if your kid is on Fortnite 10 hours a day, and spends 10 minutes with you, who's raising who? You are trying to teach a certain moral standpoint, which is fantastic, but if the game teaches a different one, do you even know the games they're playing? Who are they playing with? What are their influence? What does the game teach? Again, I'm not saying only play for those of you that, Shoni wants to play the Jesus games. No, I'm not saying that, I'm not. I'm saying at least you gotta know what's in the game you're playing at a minimum. 
because you'll be coming in and they'll say, blah, 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 blah. Where, where they get that from? It's in the game. It's in the game. Whatever they surround themselves with, that's their environment. Their environment becomes what they soak in. What they soak in, for some, it becomes what they become. Some can, can do that balancing act. Some can't. But just think about it. If you're inundated with songs every day about how great life is, eventually you'd be like, wow, life isn't, you know. But if you listen to songs 24-7 about how you ain't nothing, you ain't never going to be nothing. It's, if you're hearing that 24-7, it gets a little hard to overcome it. It's not that you can't. It's like, why put yourself in a position to overcome something that's voluntary? So think about it that way. It's like the opposite of affirmations. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Thank you. I was trying to find a way to phrase it. Exactly. <laughs> and I think what I hear you saying is whatever we feed our spirit with, words is, as in your interest is words are powerful. Mm -hmm. And um, if we feed ourselves with, with words and words that are in song, because words set to music are even more powerful. If we feed ourselves with that, we're going to become what we eat. Right. And we're going to be the manifestation of that. Exactly. Exactly. I have a haiku. Let's see if I can remember that one. Uh, I may be off account for those you counting because I'm going to memory. Haiku. If you listen to a lie long enough, it becomes your truth. She's so difficult. She's so difficult. She's so difficult. He's so ridiculous. He always wants so much. He always wants so, after you hear that, you know, lie long enough, it becomes your truth. If you don't have anything to balance it against, if you're not hearing the opposite sometimes, eventually you may start to say, well, is that me? Now I believe in discern, which, which means one, consider the source. That's the first thing I ask myself. Who is saying this? Is this someone who looks for the good and bad in you? Or someone who each time you walk in a room can find, oh, oh, you look beautiful. Oh, look how, oh, oh, only if you picked a different color. Oh, that dress looks glamorous. Only if it wasn't so tight fitting. Oh, you know, consider the source. That's the first thing. Does this person ever found anything good about you? Because if not, why are you listening to someone who's not looking out for the balance in you? So I always consider the source. Then two, I use discernment. Is it possible that this, what this person is saying is true? Because mm -hmm. we can't dismiss everything. They can't always be wrong and we're right and ha ha ha, you don't know me. So use your discernment. But discernment does not make it true. Discernment is meant for you to decide if it's true. Not to find a way to make it true. <laughs> because some people are like, well, if so-and-so said it, it must be true. No, so-and-so said it, it's time to decide if it's true. Mm -hmm. Just because mm -hmm. they love you does not mean that they're right about you. That's right. So true. Those who love you can be wrong too. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Kimism, one of my sayings. Some of you are too busy explaining your journey to someone who will not be going with you. Ooh. Hey, uh, <laughs> just, uh, okay, you know, you can't drag dead weight. Some of y'all baggage is people. It ain't actually baggage. Huh. Yeah. You have a way of just 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 cutting the, to the chase and just going going right for it, Kim. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Some of you got baggage and people, so you carrying a lot. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Let me turn this phone off. I keep hearing this sound. Um. So you got it, you got, you carrying extra stuff. You carrying the stuff that you were born with, the stuff you picked up along the way. Okay, I didn't turn it off. All that extra baggage for someone who's not even going with you. 
And then those same people, if you would reciprocate and say, you know, I noticed this about you, it'd be like, you don't know me. Well, you just read me for a half an hour. I can't give you a sentence. So, you know, just be careful how you're spending your time. It's, it's we as a people, especially people of color, are prone to look for approval before we do stuff. Mm. We get a vision, we get a plan, we get an idea. Mm. And instead of putting that plan into place, let me go get 15, whatever that quota is, because we all have a quota in our head, mm -hmm. amens, and then I'll go do it. Yeah. When we got the one amen, but that wasn't sufficient, we got to get oh, my sister or my husband or my friend or my cousin or my BFF or whoever it is that that sounding board you use to give you that amen and then you go do it. And I'm saying if he gave it to you, go ahead and do it. Yeah. That can again another one that just just resonates <clears throat> so much, uh, as you said so often. Uh, and I've experienced this in my past. I, I think I've overcome it now. I hope I have. But we spend time trying to explain to people why we're going on this journey and they're not going with us. So why the heck are we wasting time explaining where we're going and they're not coming? Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and it's, it's try, like, trying to appease them yes. for why you're going. Yes. And then if they don't get it or disapprove, well, let me try to explain it another way. We go re-explain <laughs> our vision to someone who can't see our vision and ain't gonna get our vision. It's like talking to sheep. Here you are, you know, they can't understand you. That's why they can't get it because it's not their vision. Um, haiku. Let's see if I can remember this one. If I mess it up, y'all get the point. Your calling is not a group project. God gave it to you. Yeah. It would be great if everybody, we came up with these things and people were like, that's fantastic. But then it would be disingenuous. So that's okay too. They don't, even the ones who are agreeing may not agree. They may just be saying it to appease you. Mm -hmm. But does that mean you shouldn't do it? Your path is your path. People can't see your path because it's yours. You can explain that this is the vision I've had. This is what Jesus told me to do. This is what God told me to do. This is how I feel. I've got this calling on my life. And when you have a calling, you can't really explain that. That's not something you can verbalize to someone anyway. A calling is, is that, you know, that yearning you, ha I have to do this. It's like you get up, you know, you have to do this. For Travis and I, we got to write. We got to do that poetry. We can't explain why we have to do it. We can't explain why this particular poem was written, but we got to say it. We got to say it when we're supposed to say it. And we, sometimes we get a feeling to say one over another. And sometimes we don't listen. I don't know about you, Travis, but sometimes I don't listen. I'll be that person, yes. I don't want to do that one. That was heavy. Come on, Lord. I want to do the fun one. No, do the heavy one. No, I don't want to do that one. Because we want to do what we want to do. But your calling is there for a reason. You never know who you're supposed to touch in the audience that day when he asks you to say that word or sing that song or go to, to that person and say hi. You're like, what's the big deal about a hi? Because that person just needed to be touched by someone that day. And that little hi you gave them, there's nothing to you, is everything to them. It's everything. It's an acknowledgement. It's I'm seen. And you're like, I just said hi. What are you talking about? But that person needed just that that single word that day. This makes me think about how artists are kind of just like, or at least some idea of what an artist is, is like a channel to like divinity or just kind of what you're saying. Like we are just the message, the carriers of the message and our role as a vessel of that kind of vessel is very, very important and unique. But I, I suppose like wanting the autonomy in some ways of wanting to choose or feeling fearful or insecure about what you're about to share uh -huh. can really like inhibit everything. That reminded me of that. That's really interesting. Yes, that's exactly it. Thank you, Brooke. That's exactly it. Because I always say that um, we, uh, on the back of one of my books, I think um, we're pen warriors inspired by God. And each one of us are inspired to do certain things. And sometimes we don't know why. We're like, 
do that. Well, I don't feel like doing that. And you don't know why you're inspired to do that because you're touching someone you may not even see. I have a chemism. Sometimes you fall to show somebody else how to get up. Mm-hmm. It may not always be about you. Someone sees that you fell, you didn't stay there, or you stayed a little bit, thought about it, but then you got up. So you're inspiring people. You never, I, sometimes I run into people and say, oh, you're inspiring me. I'm like, huh, what? Because you think you're doing nothing. You're nothing is someone else's everything. Mm-hmm. Your little is something, is someone else's a lot. So never negate what you're doing because you're doing a lot more than you know. And you're showing a lot more people that they can do it. And it's not about being perfect. See, that's what we get in our head. Oh, I have to be perfect. I didn't do it perfect, so I'm not gonna, no, no one's looking for perfection but you. People looking for results. Mm -hmm. So let's see, another haiku. I'll do this chemism. Love yourself enough to know you are enough. Because you got to stop here. Can't dip from an empty well. Love yourself enough. You were never meant to be perfect. Think about it. He had the capability in my mind, because I've had this conversation with him. <laughs> I have some funny conversations, but we'd be here all day with that. Anyway. He had the ability to make us perfect, but he didn't. So why are you trying to be perfect? There's no need. It's the mistakes that make us human. It's the mistakes that we learn from and do better. And I say, chemism, relabel your mistakes, call them lessons. They're lessons. You tried this. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do that. You just shouldn't do it the way you did it. Now you've corrected that. Okay, got that. I'll do it a different way. Doesn't mean your whole path needs to be changed. It means that particular way you were trying to do it wasn't quite right for you. Exactly. You Exactly, Travis. You can go from mistakes how you go without. Exactly. A mistake is supposed to be a lesson. We've used it to beat ourselves down with. I made a mistake. I can't believe that. I'm so flawed. Well, he could have made us perfect and chose not to. Even when Jesus was here, he wasn't perfect. So how are you supposed to be perfect? I mean, stop beating yourself up. Take the lesson and stop calling it a mistake. Relabel it a a lesson and then jot down what you learned from it. Jot down what you learned from it. Yes, and you're right. We are taught to be ashamed of our mistakes. That's another human frailty of ours. I can't believe I did that. I shouldn't have done that. Well, well, how else were you going to learn? You made a mistake. Now you learn. Now you do better. The mistake comes when you don't learn from the lesson. That's where the mistake comes in. You had made a mistake. Now it's a lesson. Now, here you are repeating it 200 times. Now it's a mistake because you're not learning from the lesson. But again, it's not supposed to be instantaneous. You're not, we're not geniuses. We're going to make the same mistake twice. If you're on your 15,000th, I'm asking yourself, have you learned from the lesson? You may be liking the mistake a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it becomes so familiar that it's like the only, it's better to know. To, it's in some ways it feels more comfortable to do something that's familiar because right. once you get into uncertainty all the fear comes up exactly exactly and, and fear is a familiar crutch and it's like too um if you, you, we can get in school when, when we're in school we can be stuck and you know just like being in the fifth grade and don't want to go on mm-hmm. and so that's getting stuck again in that familiar because with the next grade comes new lessons. Uh-huh. And so if we can just stay here, we don't have to take on the new lesson. So exactly. yeah. Mm-hmm. Comfortability. Yeah. Ooh, that is another crutch. I'm comfortable here. Well, I don't know what's happening in the next level. I'll just stay here. Comfortable, comfortable, comfortable. Comfortable is the box to die in. Do not live in comfortability. 
Oh, I like say that again. Comfortable is the box to die in. Woo. Yes. You do not. Woo. Mm -mm. Haiku. If you won't think outside your box, you're living in a coffin. Woo. Wow. You can just stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> Think mm. about the box. Got to. If you uh, uh, chemism, if your dreams don't scare you, dream bigger. Mm. They gotta. You gotta be like, this is crazy. If you haven't said that to yourself once, you ain't dreaming big enough. Mm. I tell people I'll be at Madison Square Garden performing one day. Of course, I get the stare downs. I'm like, oh. I will be. I'm going to be there. If your dreams don't scare you, dream bigger. Mm -hmm. Stop being so comfortable. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really. No, you are. You can do it. And before you use your age and excuse, I can, I can. Don't make me rattle off people. Well, I'm, I'm 10. I can't be. I know 10 entrepreneurs who are millionaires. Mm. Lemonade. Took her grandmother's lemonade. I can't think of her name. Lemonade's recipe. Re recipe. She's now in. Uh, I know she's in. Um, like one, two. I think five supermarkets now. Ten year old. So I don't want to hear your limitation stories. Fifty year olds. I can tell you a fifty year old bodybuilder who looks better than most twenty year olds. She started in her fifties. Well, for those of you ready, but she started. I know she started in fifties. I, I tried to use that excuse myself. <laughs> So for every age group, there's someone in your age group who overcame because they kept going. And before you say, oh, there's a lot of people doing that. Who needs one more? Who needed more lemonade when she made it? There was a hundred lemonades already on every grocery store counter. Just saying. Okay, I think I got time for fear. And this one is called fear. I slipped away. I dropped fear off. I don't think it needs me. I was always polite. I made it feel comfortable, but I'm sick of the sofa bed. It's not comfortable. I don't know how I was so unbothered. No pre-existing excuses were planted in my indecisiveness. This is my garden. I only planted non-confrontational seeds. I just felt like using genetically modified reasons. I think, I mean, I know I escaped though. I'm good now. If, scratch that, I meant to say, when, when I slipped away, I mean, <laughs> you can't just drop for your off and be okay, right? Mm -hmm. I needed a plan for my plan to follow so I could stay focused while looking away. You know how hard it is to say goodbye? Goodbyes are not my problem. It's the loss of a flavor that used to be dominant in every meal. That's what I miss. It's like pre-season defeat, but that doesn't matter now. I'm not going back. Do you think I should go back? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't need fear. I can get so much done now. I eradicated my restriction no more fear. I wonder what fear is doing. Maybe I should, nope, I'm not going back, not this time. I have a right to a life. Fear looks at me and says, are you done rehearsing? Ooh. I say, yes. It must be time to eat. What's on the menu? Defeat with roasted promises on a bed of lies serves with an empty glass of opportunities. Ooh. Wow. Wow. And that's what we do. We give fear our time, our life, our days, our growth potential. And we blame an entity that we've existed, that we've created in our own minds.
Oh, I really you... like the line about rehearsal. Yes. You can play it over in your head over and over and over and feel like, oh, I'm, I'm doing this, but you're actually just thinking it and not mm -hmm. acting. And it's easy to confuse those sometimes. Exactly. Exactly true. And you rehearse this and you think you're doing it. And then the next time, hey, um, such and such, you know, for the artists or the talkers or the speech, it doesn't matter. Each, each one of us has our fill in the blank. Would you like to fill in the blank? And then who pops up? Fear. Oh, you shouldn't want to do that? Have you done that before? What if they don't like you? What if your words don't, what if no one says anything? What if, what if you go and it's the best experience of your life that you never went to? The inner critic, it's always there. Mm -hmm. But how loud is it? You can adjust the volume, I think. Exactly. You adjust the volume by telling fear as I've told mine. Well, you might as well get a bag because we're going places. <laughs> Pack a suitcase, fear. We're going some places. It's not that I, for those of you who look and say, oh, she doesn't have a fear. Of course I do. I just tell fear to come along because we're going some places. And I tell people, Opportun opportunity is a knock on my door. She lives here. She lives here. So make your opportunities, your life, and move fear out of your way. And I'll leave you with a Kimism. I think I'm out of time. No, go ahead, Kim. OK. Yeah. I'll leave you with this. Uh, it's a Kimism slash haiku. Your biggest competition is you, haiku. If you're not racing against yourself, then you're on the wrong track. Wow. Don't compete against them. Don't compete against, I gotta be the number one poet. I gotta be the number one singer. I gotta be the number, only number one you need to be is the number one in you that you're uh, capable of. You're not racing against them. You're racing against old you. Be a better you. Improve you. Don't compete against them. It's not a race against them. It's a race against old you. Wow. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We're gonna segue, but y'all stay with us. Uh, Kim is gonna come back um, uh, before we close out. Just awesome, Kim. Uh, you just always fill us with so much, so much. Brenda, uh, we're going to segue into our um, next segment as we go into our meditation. I actually um, um, had thought, and, and, and Kim, you, you, you hit the something so, so powerful when you started off with the poem about mothers and about grieving and death, because I had started to share, I had wanted to share something um, that had to do with death, and I said, oh, that may be, it may be too heavy. Um, and when you started off there, I said, you know, you always got to go with what speaks in you. I don't know, I was led to that. But as we segue into our um, meditation, as we close out, I'm going to ask Brenda to strike the uh, um, singing ball. And I'm going to read this little short piece that was shared with me this week. Uh, then Brenda is going to do a meditation. We'll go through our announcements and invitation, and Kim is going to come back. Go ahead, Brenda. All right. I invite you to take a deep breath. <sighs> this reading is from um, a book by Bell Hooks. And the title of it is All About Love, published in 2000. And it's just an excerpt that was shared by another author. And it says, the worship of death is a central component of patriarchal thinking, whether expressed by women or men. Visionary theologians see the failure of religion as one reason our culture remains death-centered. In his work, Original Blessing, Matthew Fox explains, Western civilization has preferred 
love of death to love of life. To the very extent that its religious traditions have preferred redemption to creation, sin to ecstasy, and individual introspection to cosmic awareness and appreciation. Recently, there has been a turning away from these teachings toward a creation grounded spirituality that is life affirming. Fox calls this the via positiva. Without this solid grounding in creation's powers, we become bored, violent people. We become necrophiliacs in love with the death and the powers and principalities of death. We move away from this worship of death by challenging patriarchy, creating peace, working for justice, and embracing an ethic of love. Go ahead, Brenda. Thank you. Can you repeat where that is from? Yes. It's from a, a book written by Bell Hooks. And the title of the book is All About Love. Uh, New Visions, published in 2000. Thank you. Okay. So again, I invite you to relax yourself. You're welcome to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. And start to center on your breath. When you feel lost, when you feel stressed out, when you feel overwhelmed, excited, really sad, you can always go back to your breath. Breath is life and life is breath. And when I breathe, I like to inhale deeply through my nose and hold and exhale. And when I exhale, I like to wiggle it out, or I like to make a loud sound, almost like a reminder to myself that I'm letting everything out, letting it go. Get your perfect offering. Just ring the bell that still can ring. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. That's how the light gets in. That's how the light gets in that's how the light gets in forget your perfect offering just ring the bell that still can ring there is a crack in everything that's how the light gets in that's how the light gets in that's how the light gets in that's how the light gets in. I'll sing it one more time. You're welcome to sing with me. You can unmute and sing along. Forget your perfect offering. Just ring the bell that still can ring. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in, that's how the light gets in, that's how the light gets in. <laughs> that was an interesting way to go about it. 
Um, thank you. I also just want to repeat one line from Travis's poem. I think it's called... I can't remember. But he, write, he writes, Living to glow, loving to grow. I'll say it again. Living to glow, loving to grow. I really like that line. And I just wanted to emphasize it. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to share this. I think I actually... I'll pass it to Travis and you can read it. Thank you. Invitation Joint Trial. Hey, how you can become part of our trial family. You, you can become a member of trial and start a trial charter group in your community. Email us and request more information. You are forming groups virtually throughout the country and you could become a spiritual leader and healer in this movement. If you were once a part of Triumphs, you're still family and we would love for you to work, work we would love to welcome you back home. Email us and let us know you would like to reconnect with your Triumph family and we will show you how. Your church or faith community can also become a part of Triumph family as a friend of Triumph and share in the life of this community. Email us for more information at triumphlifecenter at gmail.com. You can support our ongoing mission of healing, educating, inspiring, and creating new way of becoming being in the community through your financial donations, which are tax deductible. Our cash app is dollar sign Triumph 2020 or mail to Triumph to Church of the New Age, P.O. Box 2157, Newark, New Jersey, 7114. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. Brenda, after you do the announcements, Bishop just wants to just greet everyone. Uh, since this is the last Sunday in the year. Okay. And if you would just, when you do the announcement, just take the slide down and just give them a minute, okay? Okay. So let me share really quick. As usual, we have our resource guide. Um, it's a Google document that has a lot of links to all types of resources, specifically centered on New York, since that is where um, Triumph Life Center is based. Um, but if there's any resources that you need in any part of the world that you are in, you're welcome to contact us at triumphlifecenter at gmail.com, and we will help you the best that we can. If you have any ideas or suggestions or comments or questions, you can also contact us too. Um, so in January, from the 20th to the 23rd, we will have our annual board meeting virtually. Um, so the meeting itinerary and invitation to join the Zoom meeting will be emailed out this week. Um, we also have our newsletter that's ready to go. So we'll be sending that out uh, via email. If you'd like a physical copy, please send us your address. We'll, we'll totally send you one. This is exciting. This is our second newsletter, and we have a lot of good stuff prepared for you. <laughs> um, you can find us on social media. We have a Spotify playlist. We have a YouTube channel where you can see some of our past discussions and even some of our times together in person. We have an Instagram, our Facebook. Um, everything is Triumph Life Center. Um, and again, continue to social distance. Continue to avoid large gatherings. Continue to wear your mask and be safe and wash hands and take care of yourself. Because by taking care of yourself, you can take care of the world around you and finally happy new year i guess we'll see you we'll see you in january <laughs> yes. um i'll pass it to senior bishop thank you everyone just you know you can unmute and just join uh, me in welcoming uh bishop he's uh having some dental work done so just please excuse um his uh, mouth hey Lori. Uh, so hey, Mom. He wants to just uh, greet everyone since this is our last Sunday in the year. Go ahead, Bishop. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. May God ever bless you. So much is going on today. Thank God for short today. Hey. Lori, please mute. Hold on a second, Bishop. Lori, please mute your phone. Thank you, sweetie. Go ahead. Thank God for. Sister Laurie, thank God for Sister Ruth. Thank God for 
Prince Robinson. Pastor Floyd is on. No, Prince Thank Robinson. God for Pastor Floyd. Mm -hmm. And we just thank and praise God for another day. Because each day we wake up, we ought to thank God that it's another day that we haven't known about. And today I thank and praise God that God blessed me to live to see 92 so far. Be 93 in a couple more months. That's right. So just keep me in prayer. And may God have a blessing and keep me. Brother, uh, Brother Bill is on also. And thank God for Brother Bill. Yeah. Um, I can't see everybody because we, we I don't have every screen up. But uh, we just want to thank our team for just the team has been awesome this year, right? Yes, yeah, they're doing wonderful work. As we transitioned from, from being in person to going virtual, we haven't missed a Sunday. We haven't missed a beat. Y'all rock. We love you. You are just awesome. Every speaker that has come through, everyone that has participated in our Zoom, you've helped us keep Triumph going and reaching to the masses. We want to give a shout out to our family, sisters and brothers in Brazil that have become devoted followers of ours. We just love them. Uh, we're so happy that we've expanded our reach. Um, we thank God for Wes, who just always showers us with, with his excellence in music. Uh, for Nadia, for being my little quiet daughter, little baby one, but just being so so instrumental in our newsletter and just you know being the, the one behind the scenes. For Travis, again, our prophet, minister, um, uh, philosopher, um, spoken word artist. And then Brenda, you know, sometimes I think she's my left and right hand. I just thank God for her. Sending out love to Fatina, who's not with us. And just everyone that has come through this year, you have made this such an experience for Bishop and I and for Triumph. We love you. Um, and we just want to keep moving through. We thank God for keep continuing to bless us through it all. We've had losses. We've had our hearts break and, and we continue through our tears to keep pushing forward. But we just thank you. Continue to pray for Bishop. He said he'll be 93 in March and hopefully we'll celebrate again like we did last year, like we did this year, right? All right. So um, we'll, be, we'll be back. Back to you, Brenda. Thank you all. Thank you so much. I think we're back to, uh, we're going to go back to Kim. Yes. And then, and then we'll do our uh, closing word to live by and our closing prayer. Back to you, Kim, for final thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. I'll leave you with this haiku. <clears throat> the power you give their validation is killing you. Peace can't breathe. I read it again. The power you give their validation is killing you. Peace can't breathe. Don't give them your validation. You have it. Nobody else can validate you but God. Peace needs to breathe. Just a plug for Kim's book. Uh, I've gifted uh, several with the book. Thank you so much for writing it and for sharing it with us. Kim, we love you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's, it's my pleasure to be here again. And the book was a labor of love. It took me a little while because, you know, Artists, for those you are not artists, who we look, you know. <laughs> yeah, we get there sometimes. <laughs> so trying to get a book done is a, a challenge, but I, I thank all of you who have loved it, who I've ordered it and looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. And we have our own Kimism. We want to end with Nadia. If you do, you read our final um, um, word to live by. And then Brenda, you're going to do our closing prayer? Or? Yes, I will do the closing okay. prayer. Go ahead, Nadia. The words live by a chemism. This is cannot, one of my favorite chemisms. <laughs> you cannot divide yourself into fractions to make someone else whole. Miller. So as we leave 2020 and prepare for 2021, make peace with your broken pieces unknown.
All right. May well, there... Let's bring Wes in first, then we'll do the closing prayer. Come on, okay. Wes. <laughs> Thank you. May there be peace within us. May we know the God of our breath that dwells within all creation. May we be confident knowing God is as near to us as our breath and as close as our heartbeat. May this knowing settle into our bones and allow our souls the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. May we not forget the infinite possibilities that we are. May we use the gifts we have received and with generosity be love, give love, receive love. May we know it is here for each and every one of us. May we mourn our losses and celebrate our gains as we transition from 2020. May love be our compass and compassion our healing balm. May we be the love, peace, and joy that the world needs in 2021. Ashe. Ashe and amen. Go in peace, be well. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, family. We love you all. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. See you next year. God be with you. God be with you. Be well, daughter. Happy 2021. Happy 2021.